Okay, today we're going to be looking at the uh, strategies for the attackers, uh, which these pieces would normally be black when you play online, uh, but they're brown here, but sometimes I call these black. Uh, so these are the attackers, and um, we're going to go over uh, the strategy for the game. It's mostly going to be uh, the strategy in the opening, um, because that's really the first important point I wanted to make. The... Um, the game is really won or lost in the opening. That's the first thing you really want to keep in mind. Um, in the opening, I define as the first 8 to 12 moves because that's about how many moves it's going to take for for each side to sort of try and accomplish their, their aims. And the aims of the, uh, the attackers is to secure a perimeter, uh, which takes between 8 to 12 moves uh, around the, the, the perimeter of the board to... Um, sort of put up a little barrier, barricade, a fence of men. And, um, you know, there's about 12, a dozen pieces here uh, in the in the middle, so for each one of those to be developed would take about the same number of moves. Um, so that's the opening, and that's what we're mostly going to go over. Um, it is possible if, uh, you know, black sort of doesn't really accomplish this his goals, but um, as long as he gets pretty close, he should be okay. Um, he basically doesn't want the king or too many pieces to to be kind of outside the perimeter, which is I basically define it this sort of I call this the red zone on each corner, sort of a, a three by three square. These nine uh, squares. Um, as long as he can keep pieces out of, out of each of those nine squares. Um, he should do all right. If if the king does get by, there he still has uh, a chance, um, a fairly all right chance. <clears throat> but um, it's really he has excellent chances whenever whenever he secures a perimeter on the board. It's basically a a hundred percent chance of winning, basically, because um, the white side can only uh, lose or, or tie. Okay, so um, just keep that in mind and. The first thing to think about whenever you're playing um, the attackers is uh, pawn structure. And if you saw the series on edge escape rules, um, this series on corner escape, but if you saw my edge escape series, you'll know that um, diagonals were real important uh, pawn chains. But in actuality, it's not as important in this game, um, hardly important at all, basically because of the big difference, because escape is not to the edge in this game. So the edge not being, the edge is going to help you out now in this game by the king can't escape there. So it's not, it, that makes it not necessary to control all the ranks and files. Um, the efficiency and the control uh, must be at the corners now, must be in these these spaces on the board, and all these spaces are on the edge of the board. That's 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 where efficiency and control must be. And the goal of uh, of the attackers during the um, opening is to limit the areas of escape for the white uh, defenders and the king. You want to limit his his possibilities of getting getting to the corner. And so. You know, the next main thing to really concentrate on is that in order to do that, Black has to play a closed game. Uh, and the closed game mostly just means um, that the pieces stay somewhat connected. Um, like, you know, that's connected there. You know, that's that's not connected, obviously. And something like, you know, way up there, that's, that's not connected. That's a little too far. And, um, but, you know, that moves okay because, uh, you know, you can... You can connect it, and you know, with that, um, you know, it is possible to stay connected like that. But that's—I I don't uh, ever recommend going up beyond. All—all all the pieces really need to be you know, on both sides, on the outer three rows around the board. So you know, these three rows and these three rows, these three rows and these three rows. Um, you don't want to play up higher than that. Because, you know, to, in order to get to the corners, you have to get near the edge. So, the pieces are your pieces are already at the edge. So there's no uh, there's no need to go up. 
Um, also, if you saw my Edgescape series, you know that um, mobility of the pieces was really important, but um, in this game it's not, not so much important. Um, you're not really concerned with mobility because the pieces aren't going to move one, uh, that much when they're on their preferred squares. Um, and uh, during the opening, um, later they can they can move a little a little farther, but um, you know the pieces just kind of don't need to move too far. Um, and you want to um, uh, place pieces on their preferred strategic squares and kind of sort of leave them leave them there until the next stage of the game. And example of some preferred squares, like these these two squares would be preferred. Um, and another option would be um, those two squares follow, you know, and then a total of these four squares. Um, or it can just be, you know, kind of these three. It doesn't have to be totally complete and something like that, that structure there. But um, so you have preferred squares. Some more preferred squares would be like that if you just want to, if you're, you're making sort of a, a, bar a barrier a barricade on the um, to the corner, so this really wouldn't be a, I, w I, don't, I wouldn't call that a perimeter game. That'd be more of a corner protection game, which is fine. I think it's best first though is try and get a do a perimeter perimeter type game, and then if you can't uh, if you have tr if you have problems, you know pieces are getting captured, then you might have to back up a little bit and make make the uh, corner. Blockade and um, so once again, the opening goal for, for for Black is he wants to cut off paths to the corners by building a perimeter. And um, and that's you know all four corners you got you got to develop um, as um, you know beginning with where White's strong side is and the strong side is comes. That term I use from sports, you know, in, in basketball, we the strong side is the side that the ball's on in there, in basketball. So this would be like if, if uh, you know, if he makes a move like this. Now this is sort of his strong side. See, because now the king, it's it's opening up on this side for the king. So this is now the strong side. So you wouldn't want to play right there. You you need to you need to play in this sector over here that's strong, make it and weaken it by by making a move there, by developing there. And um, so build a perimeter. Um, there's the nine squares on each corner. That's kind of the danger zone, the red zone. And um, play on the outer three rows. You know, try, try and restrict yourself to the outer three rows. Um, you don't just want to play on the inner five by five. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, these five, you know, these, there's no need to there's no need to play up there. Uh, it's easier to get captured, and you, you can't afford you can't afford to lose any kind of uh, any pieces at the opening. <clears throat> um, at least up there, you know. I mean, you can lose one if you can if uh, you're able to gain tempo. It's okay to maybe lose one. Um, let's see. So some perimeter pat patterns uh, around the board that you can use is I showed you there's the two move one so that's two moves and then there's the the three move um, let's see that would be yeah you could use this one that's three moves there and that's kind of more of a corner than perimeter um, you can use this this there's three there it's incomplete but that's three moves and that's going to this is going to do you a whole lot of good uh i mean this this is still pretty well secured it doesn't have to be totally complete this would be four moves you can make that and um those are basically pretty much the only ones you want to stick with <clears throat> and um let's see you can use now, one thing about that is that, see, you can't really use the same structure in each corner. So if you use this one here, you can't use it here, see, because this, this guy is already used up over here, so he can't play over there. So you can use them on opposite ends. You could, you could make the same pattern on opposite sides. These, these would be 
uh, the same patterns. And then so this one would have to be something more like this, you know, that one, and then, you know, something like this over here. Uh, you know, then you could complete it like that, see how well it holds up, because it's not kind of, it, a lot of it depends on what White's doing. It's not the easiest thing to do, but um, it's not too hard either, but <clears throat> let's see. Okay, and so just keep that in mind. You can't make the same structure in each in each corner. It's really it's really hard. Um, you just don't have enough time. I always like to make at least one that's a, a two corner. You could also um, you can combine them in the same corner. Like sometimes you're not able if you're here and then there's let's say there's a guy down here. You're, you're not able to move him here. Then it's okay at that point to to move up here. <clears throat> And see, that was kind of a combination. That was a combination of the two-man and a combination of, you know, the three, the three or four-man. So that's, you want to think about that. You can, once again, you can combine the different patterns uh, in the same, in the same corner if you, if, if uh, you're being blocked. Always try and make those preferred structures at the corners. Um... The next real important thing is um, you really don't want to capture during the opening. You know, for, again, first eight to twelve moves. You you want to favor you want to favor positional moves over capturing moves over captures because you could you're in, capturing can kind of force you to lose time sometimes. It's really easy to lose time and get behind, and then you can lose the game real easily that way. Um, it makes you stray from from your development your development plan by capturing and um, it, what's even worse is that some captures make you actually move away from the corners and you absolutely never want to move you know, like let's say the first move was this guy here okay and then let's say that this guy comes down here and sometimes you'll see players do this I think in my opinion this is a horrible move because now and also, sometimes you're you're opening up paths um, by ca by capturing white. But here, you didn't really open a path, but from removing him, but you open you made it easier because he moved away from the corner in order to capture. So, and he's off his preferred square. Remember the, the, the square he's on right now. That's not a preferred square that I was showing before. He's now on an unpreferred square. He moved away from the corner, and he lost time. Um, so. Uh, and then the next real important thing is that you never ever want to move, keep moving the same piece around too. That was that, that same example. Uh, this one, he 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 had just moved. Now, you know, now he moved again. That's two moves in a row. Um, so White's going to be able to be developing pieces while you're just moving the same piece around, and you can't you can't build perimeters like that. By moving the same piece around, so um, make sure you don't suffer from a time loss and underdevelopment. And so that's written here: never ever move the same piece around the opening. <laughs> and let's see, that's about it for for um, this first part. I'm going to do a second part. I'm going to continue on. I still have um, a lot to cover for for the strategy for black. And I just uh, don't want to make this video too long, so you want to look for the next video in the series.